Hi, and welcome to my channel where I discuss the Power Platform. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at building a very simple Power App to have a look at how to get data from SQL and specifically how to group items within Power Apps and how might we better achieve that by actually using Flow to do our grouping for us. Um, in this video as well, I'm going to have a look at how you can actually expose um, a Power App to write SQL in it for an end user. So for whatever reason, maybe you want your end user to actually be able to interact with Power Apps as if they were writing an SQL query. I hope you enjoy it. First thing we'll do is we'll just open up a blank Canvas application. And what we'll do is we'll use a phone layout in this one. Now, within this uh, power up and within my connectors, I do have a SQL connector, so I'm just going to bring that one in here, like so, and it's called JN TestDB. And the data set that I'm after is Heroes Info, which you may have seen come up a few times now in some of my other videos. Um, now that's been imported in, I can bring up a uh, tab table, like so, and I can bring in the table and we just have a quick look at that to see what's in it. And we'll just bring a couple of fields in just to visualize that table. So we have a list of superheroes here. So let's say we wanted to create a count of superheroes by publisher. The first thing I would do is create a button and actually store this data in a local collection to begin with. So let's call our local collection superheroes and we'll collect the whole database. Now, um, the number of rows in my in my database are quite small, so I don't need to think about if that will affect to begin with. Um, so I'll call that button superheroes. And we can have a quick test of that and have a look at the data within our local collection. So I'll click this button and we can see that the data has been collected. Now I'll switch this table to the local collection just to show that it exists like that. So we'll add a few fields just to have a look at that, which is pretty identical to how it was before. Now the reason I've done that is I'm gonna actually work with that local collection instead for the next collection I'm going to make. Let's just call that clear collect and we'll call this count by publisher, for example. Now, I'm going to start by looking at the distinct count of superheroes, so the distinct um, names even of the superheroes, and I just want to look at the publishers, and if I now highlight um, this, I'll get my result, which is the distinct count of publishers. Now, keep in mind this is always named as a result to begin with. What I want to do to this now is I want to work with that table as my basis. And I'm going to add columns. I'm going to add columns to this table, which is a distinct count, a distinct list. And from here, we're given the syntax, which is add columns a source, which is our distinct list of publishers. The column name, so my column name is going to be count of superheroes. And I have an expression now so what I want to do is I want to filter my superheroes and I want to essentially filter that where the result oh, not to the reset the result is equal to publisher and I want to do a count rows of each row in my table and so I can close my brackets until the errors go away and now if I click and test this out so to test within a power app you can either click play or you can alt click I can have a look in my table now and we'll see count by publisher has the expected result so I can now store this in a table. So let's actually utilize this one and do count by publisher. 
and we'll have the result and the count of superheroes like this. Now that was one way of bringing in this count. Another way to actually do this is to use Power Automate. So if we head over here, I'm going to go into my flows and I'm going to create a new flow from template. I'm going to choose Power Apps button. I'm going to call this flow Get Group Publisher. And what I'll do now is I'll create a new step and I'll use the SQL connector, which is basically executing a SQL query. So instead of doing that count and the functions within Power Apps itself, I can actually write the SQL query here. So we'll enter some connection details like so. For the query text, I'm actually gonna say ask in Power Apps instead. Okay, and it will become apparent as to why I want to do that. If we now click save here. Um, I'm just going to test this and the reason I want to do it this way is I want a response type to come back which I can use in my response parameter. So let's go select um, the count of publisher as let's say count we also want the publisher and from, so I'm just going to pick this up from here. So we want to select the count, publisher as count, from heroes info, and we want to group that by publisher, and we of course want the name of the publisher as well. Okay, so we'll just run that and see what comes back. Go to our Flow Runs page and we'll see that it succeeded. And have we have a look at our output and we can see that we've got our publisher and the count. So that's, that's looking great. I'm now going to copy that. Now we'll go ahead and look at getting the response for this now. So if we choose the response type like so, um, we're actually going to go for the query results here and we'll generate from sample and we'll use what we um, actually copied from our output earlier just now and we'll save that and let's have we a look if we have a look through the properties and everything that's written here it all looks good apart from the fact that when we get down to publisher there's actually a blank space right there and that's because it hasn't actually picked up the data type there so I know that publisher is a string and this is quite a common way um, that you might see something going wrong with your flow. Okay, so we'll save that just there. And what I'll now do is I'm just gonna give this a quick test while we're in flow. It's a good idea to always test everything before you get uh, two power ups. So we'll test this, um, which is the same query we ran earlier, which is just the count that we want. And if you go to Flow Run's page, we can see four seconds ago, there was a successful run. So next thing we can do now is actually bring in that flow into Power Apps. So let's actually attach that here. So if we click on Power Automate and click Get Group Publisher, we can see that it's now going to attach. So it'll take a few seconds and we can copy and paste that query in order to run the query within here like this. And from here, we do want the result set. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up and use this uh, clear collect again. So let's call this table one and we'll wrap that in a collection like so. And if we enter now, we'll see that it's within a table. So what it's done is it's just wrapped that within a ta table as a response with an array. So what we can do now is actually just uh, clear collect into uh, another table. So we'll call that table two, and we can use this ungroup function, which will now bring in table one, and we just want to ungroup that by table. And we'll just close that bracket 
And now we can insert a data table like this. We'll actually bring in table two. And we've now got a different way of showing that count. And now we see. The last thing I want to show is that actually we can get the user to interact with this now. So for example, I have a field in my database, which is basically the gender of the superhero. So perhaps I want the user to actually pick whether they want to filter this list by male or gender, uh, male, male or female even, not male or gender. So I'm going to give them that option here so they can select male or female. And within my query, I'm going to think about that in terms of how you would write that in SQL. So you'd select publisher and account from heroes info where gender equals, let's say male to begin with. And we'll test this first before actually bringing in the next bit. So we can see our counts. And we can see that they've now reduced based on that. So instead of it being hard coded in, we're actually going to use that drop down now. So instead of gender equaling male, gender will now equal the selected value. And of course, we need to split this like so. So we want that value to be there. And we do want it to, to then end with a dash as well. And we'll put an and in between both parts and we use this selected, te selected text dot value. Now if we give that a test, every time we click on it, we'll get a list. If we change that to female, we'll get our female list. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. Do let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover. Do subscribe, do like, do share, um, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you!